And now I'm about to get into my baked sole with quinoa puttanesca. And yes, I am speaking English, but I'm cooking quinoa, which is an ancient grain. And it's fantastic. It's a complete protein. It's gluten-free. And it, honestly, it's easier to cook than rice or potatoes. And I've got two varieties here, white and red quinoa. I'm gonna return my water to a boil, and I'm gonna cook half a cup of each. What is important is to give them a good rinse before you add them to boiling water. There we go. I've got a pot of vigorously boiling water. So just like pasta, you salt it right before you add your quinoa. And I let it just boil away vigorously for 12 minutes. While that's cooking, I'll start on my baked sole dish. pot for the sole that I'm actually going to put in the oven. So I want to get a sauce going first. About a cup of white wine. And I want to bring it to a full simmer to cook off the alcohol in there. I'll add some oregano sprigs and a bit of sliced shallot. As this comes up to a simmer, I'll just add this. And let the flavor cook out a little bit while I get my fish ready. I've got sole right now, and I'm actually gonna take the time to roll up the fish. And to keep them fastened, I just pierce it through with a toothpick. Of course, I'll be sure to pull that out before I serve it. And I'm rolling the skin inside. Now I can tell that the oregano has pretty much done its work. And the wine has now reduced by about half. I'll shut off the heat. Now I can drop in my sole pieces. Mmm. It's amazing how three simple ingredients can smell so good. A little sprinkle of salt over top. A little black pepper. Just one little bit of butter. I've preheated my oven to 375. And I'll give this a good 15, more like 18 minutes in the oven. And when it flakes, when I touch it gently, then I know it's done. Just give the quinoa a few more minutes and then I can dress the salad and by that time, the sole will be baked. Look at how the quinoa has changed. You can see the little curly cues come out. And just like pasta, I just give it a taste for doneness. And it does have a little pop to it. Yeah. Strain this. And I like to give the quinoa another rinse now. Now, for all those flavors that distinguish a puttanesca. The first, roasted pepper. And all I did to roast these peppers was put them whole in a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. Then I popped them into a bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and let them sweat until they cool to room temperature. And then the skins and seeds just come right off. As the roasted pepper sits, you get a little juice coming out of it. Oh, there's so much sweet flavor in that. I'm adding that into the quinoa. And now I have a mix of olives, pitted, green, and kalamata. But what I like to do before I chop my olives is actually, they're pitted, but I cut them in half first, and that helps prevent them juicing out at you. And add a little oregano and a little chopped parsley. Just a touch of olive oil, really. Just a tablespoon is all you need to sort of coat all the ingredients. And I'm punching it up with caper. And this is optional too, to taste, or if you're keeping it vegetarian, you can leave this out, but a little bit of anchovy paste really adds a depth of flavor. It goes beyond salt. Let's not forget the garlic. 
enough. And stir it all together. Just add a little pepper. And you know what? If I can take some raw garlic, I can take some dried red pepper chili flakes. And it's about time to pull out the fish. Mmm, that smells divine. It is time to dish up. spoonful of that white wine mixture. Mmm. Mmm. You can pick up the white wine and shallot flavor in there. Mmm. But then the olive and the caper and the quinoa sort of jumps on top of it.